Okay, we're back with Lauren with the ankle sprain, left ankle, ATFL tear plus. She's got or had a little bit of perineal tendinopathy and tenosynovitis through the back here. That's recovering, that's recovering. You can still see she's got a bit of thickening there around that ATFL because that's what happens when it's healing. But the great news is she's just started her return to running regime but she's still in rehab. So we're allowing her to do a little bit of running, but she's got to do a whole lot of rehab to allow her to do that. And the running's not much. We're talking 1,000 meters three times a week until she gets sort of feeling like the whole thing's feeling better and she's loose and she's passing that test. I'm gonna go through some of the things that we're doing with her in this stage where she's just starting to return to running. One of them is working on her BOSU sidestep, and then making sure she can actually go from a sidestep to a jump on the BOSU. Then we get her doing some work on the mini tram. Now that's to try and get her hopping on one leg a lot better. So she's sort of learning how to land on one leg and get the balance correct. That's really important that she goes from two legs and transitions to one leg. Now, when you don't have a mini tram at home, you can start working on hopping on the floor. Um, it's a lot harder, there's more impact but that's the best you can do. Then we can work on hopping on the floor and trying to transition from, again, two legs to one leg. It does take her quite a long time, so she's gonna work through that over the next couple of weeks where she goes from hopping on one leg, or sorry, hopping on two legs, hopping onto boxes, hopping sideways. That's to come in the next video. But for now, we're gonna work on showing her range of movement, what she's doing with that, because her range is still not 100%. She's a little bit shy of what her right one can do, and then going through those exercises. So. Let's have a look at her range. If you look at her right foot, so if you face that way for me, right, with her right foot, if you look at this, she can get, we've measured her, we've got, that's 13 centimeters, right? So if her toes are 13 centimeters, heels on the ground, bang, she can get the knee to wall, right? So that's her normal, we've measured that before. Her right one start off pretty bad. She's improved every single week. She's now the point, is that nine? Yep. There's nine, and she's got there. Okay, so that's great. So she is, she was sort of eight. She's, every sort of week, she's increasing a centimeter because she's doing so much stretching work. We're doing a lot of stretching of the joint in the clinic, and that's getting a bigger and bigger and bigger here in the range department. Now, the other thing why that's really important is you don't want to develop a full-on capsulitis of the back ankle. She's got a little bit of it, so in here, so just stay there, Lauren. In the back of this joint here in the capsule there, there's a little bit of tenderness, okay? And so when I put her ankle into full plantar fashion, she can feel that. You've got to be careful when you return to running that you have full ankle range when the K's really come on. You can start earlier, but you've got to get this ankle range. She's got to get to 13. She's got to get from 9 to 13, at least within that 10% before she's properly doing lots of kilometers. Otherwise, the back of the ankle can sometimes get really, really sore and then it's game over, she has to rest again. So we don't want that to happen. So making sure that range is always priority over anything else. Now, let's have a look at her BOSU. So what she's going to do is sidestep on it. Now, when you're doing this, you want to aim for this side of the BOSU. So she's aiming for the sort of like the side of the bung, if you like. And she's just learning how to step on herself. She's accepting load. This is pretty easy as far as load for her. This is more about, I wanted to experience wobbliness of the BOSU so she gets her control back. So when she goes on, her brain is switching on all her control mechanisms to control that ankle. So when she runs, she's not all over the shop. Right? And it does strengthen up the side of her ankle. Okay, Just putting load through there laterally helps. Right? But she's sort of past that. Now, she can hop on it. So what she's gonna do, and this is sort of progressing to hopping on the floor, is she can jump sideways onto that, and she doesn't have to do too much, okay? She can just land on it, push off, okay? Always landing with a bent ankle, bent knee, so she's absorbing the impact, and using that BOSU is like a push off. So she lands and bounces off, all right? And that's just gonna give her a confidence up. When she does this, if she does all these sort of exercises, plus her stretching before the jog, it makes the jog so much easier plus if she's doing the bike as well so that's really important stuff that she does that all right but the hopping work is going to help her ultimately with her running now we get her on a mini tramp when you don't have one of these like i said you do it on the floor but if you jump on that 
Best thing to do is start off, can you actually hop on two legs to start with? So she's way you're going to do that. Yes, you can, okay? Important that you go, can I do 50-50? That may seem really easy, and it's easy because there's a rebounder here, the impact is not there, and she's stable 50-50. As soon as you go one leg, it's so much harder, and it's a whole different ball game. So we don't want to go from two to one. It's just too much of a jump, and it should be all over the shop. So what I want you to do is put... If this is 50 and this is 50, I want to put in more of that weight on this one and less on this one. So we call it like 70-30, all right? So she already, she's dropped her heel up with that one. So now she does the same hop, and she's just going to put way more weight on the left. So she's increasing the load relatively on that left leg when she hops. Stop again for the line. But she's still got the impact softness of the mini trend rebounder, okay? So she can increase load without increasing the aggravation. And all, what I suggest for her is, Increase as much load as you can tolerate, meaning without pain, and that you can sort of keep balance. Okay, if she takes that fully up, it's too wobbly for her at the moment. She'll progress that, but her mission might be going from sort of 70 30 to 80 20, maybe even to 90 10, and then we try and do one leg. All right, so what do you do if you don't have a mini tramp? Jump off that, it just is a bit harder. So, what you have to do is work on maybe less of the um. 70 30 maybe you're sort of going okay i'm going to go sort of 60 40 because you won't be able to put as much weight through it so try this line for me so she's going to try to hop again and i suggest instead of doing like 30s in a row you're going to do sets of 10 like give it a break you still do 30 but you just split into sets of 10 or something like that. so she's going to do that work and just put try and put more weight than 50 percent on that she may not be able to some people we go I can do more weight on here, but I actually have to do less than it. So you might be the other way around. You might find a 50-50 still hurts. You're gonna to have to go like 30-70. So actually putting less weight on the injured tissue until it gets stronger, that it can tolerate the load. So don't feel like you have to always do more than 50, actually do less than that. Depends on the person, right? So that is definitely one we need to work on. Now, for that little tendon problem at the back, this is what we do. Have a load on there for a while. I want her doing this now this is pretty old school right meaning we've done this in physio for a long period of time it's still great because what it does is it isolates the tendon more than any other exercise so what i'm going to, need to do is have that tension on there now you don't want this too much because it just you won't be able to do it but what she's got to do is keep her knee bent right what she's going to do is pivot on her ankle and she's going to do eversion to stretch the band and inversion for her range. So she's just going out and in. Now you notice that she's pointing her toes doing that. The reason for that is I don't want her tib ant here taking over. So if she lifts her toes up, this will take over here and she won't be able to isolate her tibia, her perineal tendon at the, on the lateral side. So if she, you think she's going to go from in here and when she pulls outwards, obviously the tension increases here, that load is going to directly affect her on her perineals on the outside and she can get that sheath going the tendon going in and out of the sheath okay and what that'll do is help with that tenosynovitis problem going on there plus beef up the strength she's got from that little tendinopathy so that's a really good one for her it's boring as but it's one she can do at home when she's watching tv that sort of thing buying her time keeping her ankle loose so she can go into all the fun things in the gym during the day so if you've got something like that, definitely add that one in because that's going to make your ankle rehab just that little bit better. So for her, she can start the running very carefully, but she needs to then progress her hopping to get the full sort of kilometers up. We won't progress that for at least two weeks. So she's going to be doing that for two weeks. Then when we see her, what we're going to do is progress that up and see if we can get her hopping onto boxes, left and right, change direction. And that will give her way more strength in that ligament and the tendon give a lot more confidence and loading capability so she can increase the case. We'll see you next time.